Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. And at the end of day yesterday, there was some pretty big news. That is Unity, as in the Unity game engine, acquired Weta Digital. Now, Weta Digital is the VFX tool arm of Peter Jackson's special effects company. You've no doubt seen a movie they created. And this one was a $1.6 billion deal. Now, an interesting thing is Unity is now publicly traded. So we can see what the market thinks of this acquisition. So do keep in mind, $1.6 billion is what they paid to acquire Weta Digital. So here is Unity's trading price right now. They're trading down 8%. And if you're curious, uh, their current evaluation or their market cap is $48.49 billion. So let's do a little math here. So 48 million, nope, billion. All right, so $48 million and we are down by say 8%. So times 0.08 so this $1.6 billion deal has taken their stock valuation down by almost $4 billion. Wow. But I got to say, the stock market is full of idiots, so I wouldn't put too much stock into that. Anyways, what are you wondering? Oh, that was not an intended pun. Weta Digital. Never heard of it. They are, again, the software company side of Weta. Now, Weta makes uh, their VFX company, so they actually do the special effects for movies and so on. They also have an animation division. Unity are not buying those. They are just buying the tooling division, all of the software they use. In fact, Weta is going to officially become the biggest customer of Unity, which is kind of interesting. So um, you've no doubt, as I mentioned earlier on, heard of them in terms of films they've worked on. Uh, you may have heard of these blue guys. I believe they're called Smurfs. Um, then we've got, uh, they're working on the Hawkeye movie, the Eternals movie, um, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, the Suicide Squad. And then we get into their filmography. Some of the most famous ones, obviously. And some of the software we we're going to see that they've picked up were things like uh, animating of Gollum's face for... Um, uh, the Lord of the Rings films and so on. Well, they pioneered the technology to make that happen, the Kong films and so on. So they are, as you can see by the things scrolling by, they have made lots and lots and lots and lots of movies. So uh, there's definitely a lot of um, technology know-how at Weta Digital. And, uh, well, Peter Jackson is now a little bit more wealthy than he was. So here is the Unity blog uh, kind of talking about what they've done there. Unfortunately, they do throw buzzwords in like metaverse in the metaverse. We're working on the metaverse. Everything's going to be metaverse now for the next... It's the new blockchain, but... Uh, anyways, they are basically acquiring Weta Digital, which is pretty cool. You can see some of the, the, the details of this acquisition. It's going to work out to something like 270 employees are added in, uh, and here is the key technologies. This is probably the part that most of you are interested in, um, and you're going to be able to get access to these in a way. We'll get back to how they're going to license this stuff out in just a second. But they've got Manuku, uh, which is a path tracing renderer. So basically that is what does the final uh, physics rendering. It's sort of like RenderMan. Uh, it's it's wet as equivalent to RenderMan. It's what you use to actually render each frame. If you use blenders, it's the equivalent of cycles, for example. Uh, Gazebo uh, is an interactive renderer. This would be the blender equivalent of uh, Eevee, uh, for example. So they've got uh, a real-time renderer. For, that's for the artist to see the best approximation you're going to get of the shot and then you got Manuku I, I'm probably saying that wrong or Manuka uh, which again is the final rendering result Loki which is a physics based simulator for water fire smoke cloth muscle and so on um Tools include Fizz Light, Fizz Cam, and HDR Convert, provide uh, foundation for lighting and coloring workflows. Koru, again, I'm probably pronouncing all of these things wrong. Uh, it's a puppet rigging system. I believe this is the one that they really showed off uh, combined with their facial tech uh, when they were doing the um, Golem stuff and then later with the Planet of the Apes stuff. Uh, Barbershop, which is for a hair and fur. Again, really strongly developed for the whole... Um, the Lord of the Rings and, and sorry, not Lord of the Rings, uh, Planet of the Apes type stuff. Tissue uh, for biologically accurate atomical characters. Uh, Apteryx, uh, artists with complete workflow started with procedural generation of feathers, hand sculpting and grooming for animated feathered creatures. World building, including scenic designer and city builder. City builder is probably the one that I find the coolest. It's a procedural city building from planet scale to small scale scenes. Lumberjack for vegetation. 
Are they going to use the F word? Ha! They didn't use the F word. Uh, that's nice. Uh, so, lumberjack artists can author and edit plant topologies, including animated geometry, manage levels of details, instancing. Uh, then got Torterra, uh, procedural growth and simulation system for vegetation and biomes uh, that works with lumberjack to create large scale and complex scenes procedurally. So, you can definitely see how these things could be used um, in a game production environment. And the, the world between game and film is getting blurrier and blurrier and blurrier. And both Unreal and Unity are just salivating at getting into the film production pipeline. And they've just bought their way in in a huge way here. Uh, Eddie is an advanced liquid smoke and fire composition plugin for volumetric effects. Um, and we got high def and shot sub for uh, production review. Uh, live viewing, a uh, mix of computer generated content in real time with onset camera feeds. And then projector is a production tool supporting scheduling resource prediction, so on and so forth. So basically, if you take all of these tools combined for filmmaking, and you can see a real huge overlap with a lot of the companies that um, Unreal Engine has bought. So they, you know, they bought, um, what is it, Groom and a Haircut? No, something in a haircut, Shave and a Haircut, uh, and other tools in the past for doing all these things. They got their MetaHuman stuff and so on. Uh, you can see how these two are basically going at it, uh, kind of uh, taking each other head on, and really a focus on the... Um, uh, the film production world side of things. So another exciting element of this acquisition is the asset library they are inheriting, which includes urban and natural environments, flora, fauna, human man-made objects, materials, textures, and more. They will continue uh, making and feeding into this library for years to come. So this is sounding kind of like uh, their equivalent to Megascans, which again, uh, this acquisition, $1.6 billion sounds insane, but it does really, on the production side of things, bring them to uh, more of a parody with where Unreal Engine is going in the high-end film side of things. And here's where some of you go, oh no, cloud, yes. So to achieve the full potential of these tools, we will work to unify this pipeline to deliver content access across the spectrum from cinematic realism to real-time XR on mobile devices. Uh, includes linking these capabilities with our other content tools such as Speedtree uh, with proven scaling, blah, 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 blah. So the other tools that they've bought. Our intent is to cloud enable these tools and ensure they easily integrate with the workflow artists already use. It should be easy to take advantage of these advanced capabilities directly in DCC tools such as Maya and Houdini, back to Houdini in a second. Uh, and it should be easy to move and manipulate content into the Unity engine and more. So there is the thing. So uh, cloud. This is going to be cloud-driven tools. And I think we're going to get more and more used to that. For example, MetaHumans on the Unreal Engine side is also cloud-driven. And part of that could just simply be uh, you need supercompute scale to make some of these things work, and it's not going to be at the individual level. And part of it is it's sort of like how when Adobe moved to subscriptions years and years and years ago, cloud is the next evolution of that. So it's a customer they can sell to over and over and over again. Um, so then we get into the metaverse. I don't want to talk about the metaverse. You know what? So I'm just not going to talk about the metaverse. All right, there we go. Uh, so that is it. It works out to basically 270 of the employees that do all the software development at uh, Meta Digital, Weta Digital, sorry, are now going to be uh, Unity employees under the Unity, I think, cloud uh, department. Uh, they're going to continue to support uh, Weta as well. Uh, but the tools are going to be made available to the rest of the environment. And so, again, the tools are pretty comprehensive in what are available. And now one of the interesting things about this is this isn't the first move towards Weta making their technology available to other companies uh, because it was announced earlier this year that uh, Weta for Houdini was going to be available. And it's some of the same things. It's their real-time renderer. It's their, not sure if it was their final renderer as well, um, their city generation tools, and so on and so forth, uh, are all available to Houdini, which is coming in beta at the end of 2021. I don't think this should impact it. It's not available as of yet. Uh, but that basically is what this announcement was all about is that uh, Weta Digital uh, licensed their technology to side effects software, it's Houdini. Um, so they were moving in this direction as well. And basically, uh, Weta had done a big announcement in partnership with Amazon for cloud moving their technologies. So it sounds like Weta's technology is mostly in the cloud already. So it does make sense for that to be how Unity go ahead and integrate it. Uh, and again, here we see, so like I said, they're very fickle. So we're actually up 1% of a drop from uh, where we started. So you know what, maybe things will get better over time. Uh, but that is the acquisition. That is the news. Weta Digital is now part of Unity. Not at first aimed at the world of game development specifically. This is quite obviously more of a film and VFX thing. Uh, but that's, it's a pretty huge announcement, to be honest. And, and to be honest, when I look at the price, one6 
billion dollars. When I look back to like when ILM was purchased or Pixar were purchased, which was the bun- the bargain of a century, when you hear things like one billion or four billion or whatever, you're like, ah, that's insane. Uh, but then when you start thinking about the kind of films that they've worked on, the technology that the pipeline is in, I don't know. They, they these technologies here uh, really kind of do fill a bunch of holes in Unity's um, technology stack, especially when they want to compete in film like what Unreal Engine is. Unreal definitely has a bit of a head start here. And I guess you could have people arguing, like, why aren't you focusing on games, Unity? That's what you do, Unity. Well, that's part of being a public company. They've got to chase those other revenue streams, like it or not. And I don't think, again, I I think a lot of this will trickle down and be of use to um, game developers, especially if they pull off something like uh, Nanites, where you can have these really high detailed scenes, and then the game engine takes care of making a real-time capable version of it for you. Don't know what I think about moving more and more to the cloud, but at the end of the day, I think we all have to acknowledge it is the future. So what do you think of Weta Digital being acquired by Unity? Do you think it's $1.6 billion well spent? Do you think $1.6 billion is a number that is just too insane to comprehend? Let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.